Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I thought today that we could work on this paisley quilt together. If you have a few minutes and you have some free time and you want to join me, I'm going to be tread, uh, trimming the thread tails that we left off with the other day on the paisley art quilt. You can see I filled in all of the other paisleys. All of those have been trimmed, but like I promised, I left the thread tails on the one that we did together so that we could trim them together because I want you to follow along in the whole process of this little art quilt. So we're gonna be doing that today. And I thought uh, after we trim the thread tails that we could work with some of the ink tense pencils and start coloring in some of the background. So that's what I'm doing today. If you have some free time and you want to hang out, that would be awesome. Just letting you know, you can get a copy of this uh, PDF. It is listed in the Creative Crew Group file section. So if you go there on a computer or an iPad, maybe some kind of device that lets you see the options on the left side of the screen, you should see a little section that says files. I've uploaded the PDF for this little art quilt there. And uh, you can also find it on YouTube. I started a little playlist for this art quilt. So if you're watching on YouTube, this is the replay, but I'm so glad you're following along. There will be a link in the description box that brings you over to my Dropbox where you can find the PDF for the Paisley quilt design and then you can just trace it and draw it onto your fabric. I will uh, put a link for this playlist down in the description box too and that's going to have all of the videos for this playlist in one section. So how's everybody doing today? Let me just make sure that this video is working well. Okay. <laughs> So what I have ready for today is just some little tiny scissors. That's what we're gonna use to trim the thread tails. I have a different assortment of brushes. I have some really coarse brushes. They're like horse hair, although they might be synthetic. I'm not really sure, but they're really coarse and kind of stiff. And uh, then I have a couple of these other brushes as well and these work just fine too. I like the coarser brushes because they help move the medium around on the fabric a little bit better. I have put into a cup some clear aloe vera gel. You can use a fabric medium as well, but uh, this is my favorite. You can find this at Walmart. And like the section for lotions and things like that, is where I found this. So that's what we're doing today. I just wanna make sure everything is up and running good before we get started. If you're here, I would love it if you said hello and let me know that everything's sounding okay, everything's working good before I start cutting all these thread tails. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is go ahead and switch the screen over so that you can see my work table as well. There we go, I should be down in the bottom of the screen and down here, hello. <laughs> and you can see my Paisley quilt. Hopefully that, that's nice and clear and not uh, blurry. Hello, Kathy and Susan and Belle. My day is good. It's been a little bit of a slower day. I've tried uploading the Creative Crew group chat to YouTube all morning. And after doing some research, I've figured out that uh, I think the videos that are not uploading are because they're the ones that are over two hours long and it's just too much to process. And YouTube's not processing them. So. We're either going to have to cut the Creative Crew Group live videos shorter or just keep them on our Creative Crew Group page and watch them there. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing all day today. 
and then setting up for this live. So I'm excited to go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to first begin by trimming these little thread tails. You can see I filled in the other paisleys and I have trimmed off when the glue was dry all the little thread tails. This one here is the one that we filled in together in the first video. Some of these threads are not completely glued down and that's okay because when I take this to the sewing machine, I'm going to stitch everything down with some thread. So I'm not really worried that there's loose little bits of thread in here. That's okay as long as it's staying put where I want it for the time being. We can go ahead and give this little paisley a haircut. I have a small little pair of scissors here and I'm just going to pull these little thread tails and start trimming them up. Let's see, I have one that's loose all the way back here, but I want it to fill in this section. So I'm just going to cut it right there and that can stay there for the time being. <laughs> I'm just going to start trimming them just like I do my bangs <laughs> all raggedy just like that hello Lisa how are you just like that probably need a sharper pair of scissors There we go. I just heard a little bit ago that we're supposed to get some snow tomorrow. Although it's not very much, just like two to four inches maybe. That'll be our first real snow of the year. <laughs> Probably the first and last for this year. But you can see I'm just really going in and just trimming right into the point of that paisley. Let's shake that off and get all those bits off of there. Let me take a brush and just brush some of the little fuzzy bits right out of the way. All of that's just coming from the fuzzy types of yarn that I filled in the paisleys with. And that can stay right in there. So just like that, we've trimmed uh, the paisley that we created together in the first video. And that's really all there is to it. You're just trimming it up just like you're giving a little haircut, right? So at this point, go through and trim all your little paisleys once your glue is dry from gluing down the yarn. I've heard from several people who are making this paisley quilt and they're going straight to couching the yarn down without using the glue and that's absolutely fine if you want to do that we're all different and this is just one of the techniques that you can use to create um these little art quilts hello hi diane hello miss connie hi sherry how are y'all doing we're doing some creating creating today so now let's go ahead and have some fun with these ink tense pencils there are a couple other things that I want to use on this quilt. Yay, you got me, Connie. Um, I have some fabric pastels that are brand new in the box that I bought like two years ago or last year that I still haven't used. I do want to try those on this quilt. And I have some fabric markers. But for today's video, we're trimming the thread tails and we're going to be using the Ink Tense pencils to give some color to the background and that will need to sit and dry really well before I bring in the fabric markers or the pastels. 
So today we're just going to work with the ink tints and have some fun adding some color to the white background fabric. So that's what we're doing. I have some aloe vera gel in my little cup. I have not thinned it down. It is just a straight gel. And today, instead of coloring the background first and then activating the pencils with the ink, I'm going to go ahead and wet my fabric with the gel and then bring in the colored pencils and we're going to go bold right off the bat with the background. So I think that sounds fun. We're going to go ahead and get started with that. Let's see, I'm just trying to figure out which brush would be better. I have little fuzzy bits from trimming all of this fancy yarn, but that's okay. I still do have the sticker on the back, just to let you know, and I experienced this with the last, the little turtle art quilt that I did. The longer this sticker stays on the back, the harder it is to peel off. So just letting you know that. It does come off uh, the turtle quilt. I had a couple little places where the glue was really heavy from gluing down the yarn. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Barbara. Uh, that the sticker wanted to stay on it, and that was fine. I didn't care. I stitched right through whatever was left on the back. Connie says, what is the benefit of the label on the back versus freezer paper? Okay, the label on the back... Uh, stays there. I did try this one other time with freezer paper and what happens is when you're scrubbing and blending colors with the ink tints or you're painting with fabric paint, the brush or like any kind of liquid loosens up the fabric on the freezer paper and it starts to bubble and the only way to get that to stick that back down is to repress it with your iron and uh, if you've got yarn and other things in the way, then you might not be able to do that. The label paper stays there. It's not gonna bubble when we add water or the aloe gel or a fabric medium. So that would be the benefits between the label versus the freezer paper, is the fabric does start to lift off the freezer paper when you're working with it. You could, if you wanted to, use a fusible, interfacing like a stabilizer on the back like uh, maybe the Pellon P44 but I tend to like this uh, the label because it comes off and then it's just the fabric that I'm quilting through but we're all different you could try different things we just really want something to keep that fabric from moving around and keep it uh, nice and firm while we're working with it so you could try the freezer paper if you wanted to. That's just the reason why I'm staying away from the freezer paper. So you'll see here I have my little ink tints pencils ready to go. Hopefully I don't knock those off of the table. Ooh. Sorry, I just hit the camera. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and start. I haven't even decided which colors I want to use on my background. So this quilt is just sort of a spur of the moment kind of kind of deal here. I have some of the aloe vera gel on my brush and I'm just going to brush around the inside of this paisley. And what I'm doing is just wetting that fabric a little bit so that we can take in some ink and move it around on our fabric. And I don't really know that we'll do the whole background together, but I don't wanna move on without you being here. So I want you to see how I plan on coloring in the background while I'm live and doing it with you. All right, I'm just spreading this aloe vera gel right into the fabric, pushing it down right into those threads. Hello, how are you doing today? Let's see, which color should we use? Let's go in with 
let's see. You know what? I'm liking the greens and the purples in this quilt. Let's take field green is the color that I have chosen. And let's just go for it. We're just going to start coloring right in the center of this paisley. And you can see because we put the aloe vera gel down first that the color is bold and bright right off the get go. We can come in, blend that a little bit with our brush. Just like that, we'll soften it up a little bit and blend it out. So that's kind of pretty. Who all has uh, played with these ink tense pens pencils before? So just like that, we've got some green. And I wish that the camera really picked up the green. I'm looking at the image on the screen and it's just not as vibrant as it is in person. So I do want you to keep that in mind that it is so much prettier in person. Plus the yarns are sort of metallic and that doesn't really show up in the video either. So keep that in mind that uh, yeah, the green is so much prettier in person. <laughs> I wish you could actually see what that looked like. Maybe I'll take a, uh, a picture that might show up better once we're done so that you can see maybe the colors will be more vibrant in a picture versus using the webcam. But yes, no, the, the colors I'm looking now are definitely prettier in person. I think we'll color all of the inside. <laughs> You'll make some tea, Connie? That sounds like a good idea. Thank you so much, Amy. Going to spread some aloe vera gel right into the inside of this paisley. It is spreading some of the green color around because I did not clean my brush first. So you want to keep that in mind if you plan on switching colors that you'll just want to rinse off your brush brush in some water before switching a color. I'm just spreading some of this aloe right out where I want this green to go. So Connie, you'll make some tea. That would be awesome. <laughs> I've heard from so many people who are going to the mid Atlantic quilt show next week. That's going to be fun. Yes, fun accidents. Leaving the color on your brush while you're moving around to different areas of the quilt. I really wish the webcam picked up the colors as pretty as they are. I'm just spreading out some of that green just like this.
Mid Missouri. Is there a quilt show in Missouri? Yeah, I think I'm going to like the green on the inside of all of the yarn parts. That's pretty. Hi, Sylvie. How are you today? If you, uh, if you do miss these lives, you can always catch them on the replay. I'm going to try to upload it to YouTube. We'll see how that goes. YouTube and Facebook videos have not been cooperating with me. It's sort of hit and miss. You'll have to catch the replay to catch up to where we are right now. We trimmed the little thread tails that we left on the first paisley together. And then I've started coloring in with the ink tense pencils right inside the middle of the paisleys. And I'm just putting down some aloe vera gel first because we're going to go bold with the color right off the bat. And yeah, I'm getting some of the aloe vera gel on this brown yarn, but that's okay. It'll dry. And then we're putting in the field green color right inside, just like this. What's really fun about the ink tents is that uh, if you let this sit and dry, you can come back in and add more color to it. So if you want it darker, or more vibrant, you can always do that. The turtle quilt, when I did that one, I went in several times with the water, the darkest part of the water, to darken that up. You just let it sit and dry and then come back in with more color and work with it like that. Hi, Debbie. How are you? How's your day going? Connie, I might have to come visit. <laughs> Missouri Star has a show. Sylvie, uh, yeah, we were just talking about the freezer paper. You could use freezer paper. However, you see how I'm using the brush on the fabric and rubbing it back and forth. When you do that, the fabric tends to lift off of the freezer paper. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't use freezer paper when I'm doing this is because it tends to lift off. And especially when you get the fabric wet and then you're brushing the fabric back and forth to spread the colors, the fabric loosens up from the freezer paper. That's been my experience with it. You're more than welcome to try it, but that's what has happened every time I've tried to use the freezer paper in an application like this. Is it just tends to loosen up and then you have to heat it back up with the iron to get it to stick back down. And uh, yeah, for me, it was a little trou troublesome, but you could always try it and see if you like it. The freezer paper would certainly come off the back easier than this label will at the end, but 
for me, it just loosens up too much while I'm working with the piece. Uh, right now, the, the yarn is glued down. I have not sewn down the, the yarn yet. Once uh, I have all of the little elements of this quilt colored in and painted in and whatever we're going to do with this art quilt, once all of that is done, I am going to bring this to the sewing machine and we'll do some thread painting. Uh, we'll do some quilting. And at that point, I will be sewing down the yarn so that it's permanent. Uh, if you did not want to sew down the yarn, you could use a permanent glue like Fabri-Tac glue, which dries clear and it's permanent. Um, you could, let's, let's talk about, let's think about this for a second. I used Elmer's glue all to glue down my yarn. This is an art quilt, so it's never going to get washed in the laundry. I'm almost willing to bet that that glue would hold that yarn down forever and you don't really necessarily even have to sew it down, right? Because this is just going to be for looks. It's not utilitarian. And I would not recommend this method for a quilt that you plan on washing. If you want to wash it, then make sure you sew everything down or use a permanent glue like Fabri-Tac. For your art quilts, you can get away with so much more. But uh, right now, it's just glued down. Then I got my aloe, uh, uh, my aloe vera gel from Walmart. Uh, you can find it like in the hand lotion aisle or where they have the suntan lotion stuff. Look there. This was on the very bottom shelf, so you might have to ask somebody where it is. Um, but yeah, the Walmart near my house carries it. All right, so we have our green down in place. Again, it is way prettier and more vibrant in person, so keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and bring in some purple. Let's see, we have violet. Let's go ahead and add some violet to this. Again, I did not clean out my brush, so it's still gonna have some green on it. That's okay. I'm just gonna put some of this aloe down on the fabric and get that ready for some ink. Does the green aloe show green or clear? I believe, Miss Connie, that it's going to have a tint of green if you put it on fabric. If you can find the clear aloe, that's the one I'd go with. I'm pretty willing to bet that the green aloe will be green when you put it on white fabric. See how I'm scrubbing that fabric just to blend out that color a little bit? That, when you use freezer paper, this motion here really loosens the fabric up from the freezer paper. So that's one of the reasons why I use the label. Let's bring in this little brush and see if I can scrub that even more. There we go. Once this is dry, I'll probably come back and add even more color to make it even bolder. There comes a time when you're working with this where it just doesn't seem like it's going to hold any more color. And so if you just let it sit and dry, when you come back, 
it'll go darker once you start applying color back to it. So there's some purple. Oh, Melissa found some clear aloe at Walgreens in the suntan lotion. Yes, yes. Look, uh, look at your drugstores too, like your Rite Aids, your Walgreens, CVS. Um, it might not be the exact same brand that I have, but uh, several other brands do make the clear aloe gel. I'm kind of thinking I like the purple and the green together. Yeah, if you let it sit, the aloe is going to dry as well. So uh, you'll have to put more aloe vera gel back down onto it and just keep layering it, but that's completely fine. Yes, I'm thinking I love this purple and green. I really wish that... It showed up in the camera the exact same colors. I'm looking at the camera and it's just not as vibrant and pretty. So that is my plan. I'm going to go through and add purple, uh, some here and some here. And, uh, and then I'll let it sit and I will go back in with some more green and purple just to really darken it because like I mentioned before, if you let it dry and you come back, you can go bolder and darker. So yes, that's my plan right now as of yet is purple and green. We'll do a little bit more together. I think I would like to add some shimmery parts to the background. On the last art quilt, the little turtle I did, I came in with some shimmery nail polish. That was so pretty. Yeah, my purple looks blue. I know, I'm, I'm looking at the camera and I, it does look blue, but it's actually violet. <laughs> um, have you tried colored pencils doing this? Uh, you could use a watercolor, but you're not going to really get the intensity of the ink. And uh, you could certainly try it and see what you think. I've also used crayons in art quilts. Have you ever heard of that? Maybe you should uh, do a YouTube search for uh, coloring fabric with crayons because you can heat up your fabric with your iron and then color on it with crayons. That's a lot of fun. Hey, Pammy. Pam, I keep forgetting that you are retired now. And so that when I see your name pop up in the middle of the day, the first thing I think of is she is at work. What is she? I hope she doesn't get caught. But then I remember you're retired. <laughs> you can do what you want. <laughs> so we're just having fun with some Inktense pencils today. Yeah, Connie, go on YouTube after the live, after I'm gone, go on YouTube and uh, search uh, coloring fabric with crayons or uh, I've even found it by searching 
um, quilting with crayons, something like that, because people have used panels that they've created in their quilts with crayons. I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, not enough to really teach on it, but it is a lot of fun. And I do know that crayons are a lot cheaper than these Inktons pencils, but they're not quite as, they're not as bold. And uh, the ink tents I do know is permanent. So if you were to do this on a quilt that you wanted to wash, the ink tent is going to stay there. Um, I'm not really sure about the crayons. Yeah, Pam, you can do what you want now, right? I do know that before I come back in with more color, I'm going to have to find my pencil sharpener. I was looking for it right before we started, and I cannot find it. I'm going to have to sharpen these pencils before too long. Now, one thing I do want to pass on to you before we go, because this is something that I'm noticing with this quilt that I did not notice the last time. But see, this time we started with the yarn where on the turtle quilt, I colored in all the background and then added the yarn. I am noticing that right here, like wherever I got glue and then the yarn moved, the glued section of fabric is not taking the ink. So if you start with the yarn first, like I did on this quilt, be really careful with the glue, because if you have any sections of glue and your yarn moves, it's not taking the ink the way that the rest of the fabric is. So keep that in mind. On my turtle quilt, I colored the entire background first, and then I went in and added the yarn for the little waves. And so I did not have that issue where I'm noticing today that in certain sections where I got really heavy handed with the glue, that the ink tent is not taking to those places. But there's so many things that we could do if I, if I decide that I don't like that, we could add some glitter or something right there. I could come back with some more yarn or something, but right now I'm not even worried about it. So there's just one little section more that I want to color in while I'm live with you and then we're going to let this sit and dry. So if you've just joined us, in the very beginning we trimmed the thread tails from the paisley that we filled in together. So you'll get to see that if you watch the replay. And then we started coloring in the background with the ink tint pencils. Melissa, uh, I don't know that I've ever said that, but there's so many artists and quilters out there who use the ink tints, and it makes total sense to save the shavings because when you when you sharpen these you're basically shaving off bits of ink that you paid for. So it makes sense to say, to go through and save it, you know, pull the little wood bits out and save the ink. And I'm thrifty like that. So to me, that sounds like it makes perfect sense, but I'm pretty sure you heard somebody else say that. I really love the deep purples right in through that, those sections there. I wish it showed up purple on the screen. So there we go. That is the start of our background. Let me see if I can put it all in the camera. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there. I think that's in the screen so you can see it. 
Yes, I'm a cheapo when it comes to crafting supplies. You know, I don't mind paying good money for good quality things, but then I use it like it's made out of gold, right? And I'm very conservative with it. My favorite crafting stuff are like the shirts that I bought at Goodwill <laughs> and all the button front shirts, all that fabric for $27. That's really my favorite things to do. But when I buy quality art supplies, I try to get the most use that I can out of them. And, you know, like using aloe vera gel instead of fabric medium saves you a lot of money too. So I could definitely see if when you sharpen these, go through and pick out the bits of ink and save them in a little container, you know, and use them up. Yes. I know, Connie, it looks blue. I'm going to take a picture with my cell phone once we're done live and see if that doesn't show the vibrant green and purple. And I'll post it here on my page uh, if it does so that you can see that because, yeah, the screen is definitely showing blue. Oh, my glory, you have me streaming on a 65-inch TV. I bet my face is humongous. That's so funny. So this is where we're at. I think it's going to be fabulous. We might even add some sequins or some flat rhinestones or something. I could see that with this quilt. I do know that I want to come in with some like thin fabric markers. Let me grab one. Oh. Of course, I'm not going to find the one I'm looking for. I have uh, these fabric markers. This one, this one <laughs> is uh, really thick pointed, but I do have one that is a fine tip that I want to do some scrolling lines around the paisleys once everything is colored and dry. I do want to do that. You could even use like a Sharpie pen. And uh, of course, I'm not going to do it now, but see how fine tip that is. And it's permanent. You know, come in and do some pretty little doodling around this. I think that would be so pretty, right? So yeah, I have lots of plans for this, and this is just the second phase. Now, because you do see how I'm going to color in the background, I probably will let this dry and then come back and fill in and just make this darker off camera because I don't want you to get bored with me. And you see how I do this. I'm not going to add any other colors except for the green and the purple. And the next time we come back, I think I want to do something shimmery with the background. And yes, shimmery. And maybe we'll do some doodling. How does that sound? I think that sounds fun. So yes, this is where we are. Uh, if you have any questions after the live, feel free to put them down in the comment section. Let me go ahead and switch the screens. There we go. I'm so fancy. <laughs> and uh, yes, if you have any questions, you can jump down to the comment section. And I'll try to be as quick as I can to get back with you on that. But yes, just pull out some fabric and uh, start playing around with it. We might even pull out those pastels or some fabric paints. I don't know. We could do so much with this. And because it's an art quilt, we can do even much more with it because it's never going to be washed. So I'm not worried about it falling apart or fading. This is just a work of art to look at. So, yeah, we can break so many rules with the art quilt. <laughs> All right, y'all, I am off to set this up and let it dry. I am going to take a picture. So keep an eye out for that here in a few minutes once we're done processing this video. Thanks for spending some time with me today.
I've enjoyed our little crafting time. And I will look forward to seeing you really soon. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Let me see. There we go. Have fun creating. Bye.